In this video, I'd like to discuss with you the effect that the differential preload has on car balance. Hello, this is Bruno, lead performance engineer at Optimum G. First of all, we are going to be focusing on limited slip differentials, particularly the Salisbury type. We need to understand what locking torque is. There are many ways that you could be changing the locking torque of the differential. It could be by changing the ramps, by changing the number of friction plates, or even by changing the oil viscosity. However, in this video, we are going to be focusing on changing the preload. This means that by focusing on the preload, we are going to be mostly analyze the entry of the corner. So from the braking until the apex, up until where the driver starts touching the throttle. So this is where we are going to be focusing. First thing, we need to focus on understanding what locking torque is. Differentials are made to allow the left and right side tires to rotate at different speeds. But at the same time, we want to control that freedom and also be able to lock the differential in corner exits so that we have enough traction. With locking torque, um, once you apply different torques on the left and on the right sides, this naturally happens as you travel um, through a corner. If the torque difference is lower than the locking torque inside the differential, the differential is going to be locked and there will be no speed differences between its left and right sides. On the other hand, if the difference of torque from left and right is higher than the locking torque, there will be a speed difference between the left and right sides and the differential will be considered to be differentiating these two speeds. Let's look at an open differential. An open differential has no locking torque, meaning that it cannot sustain any torque difference between left and right and also that the tires are going to be rotating at their free rolling speeds. So in this case, if we look at this maneuver, um, a corner to the right we see that the outside tire on the left wants to travel a longer path while the inside tire wants to travel a shorter path. Since they are traveling di different distances, but during the same period of time, their speeds must be different. The outside tire, as shown here, in this corner, braking, apex and exit, it's, it's going to be a little faster because it travels a longer path, while the inside tire traveling a shorter path needs to go a little bit slower with the highest difference being at the apex. Instead of looking at the raw wheel speeds, let's create a math channel to better visualize this speed difference. So we are going to focus on the wheel speed difference and we can see that how it progresses along the corner and that the highest value is at the apex. Now, if we look at the limited slip differential, it's going to be different because the differential is trying to limit, it has some locking torque, it is trying to limit the difference between left and right sides. So we would be seeing something like this. Since the wheel speeds need to be closer to each other, the outside tire is going to travel a little slower than it would otherwise, a little slower than free rolling speed, while the inside tire is going to travel a little faster than free, its free rolling speed. So you can see that now they have closer speeds. Let's again look at the wheel speed difference channel. So here we had the previous case, so we can see a big sp speed split between left and right, and now with the limited slip differential, this difference is decreased up to a point where the driver goes back on the power, the power ramp is active, and then the speed difference is, is zero. So we are focused on this area here from entry to apex where the preload has the highest influence. Okay, so we can see that as we increased the locking torque, the speed difference decreased. This means that if we have no locking torque whatsoever, which is an open differential, we are going to have the highest speed difference between left and right because they are going to be traveling at free rolling speeds. On the other opposite, we are going to have such a high locking torque that the differential is going to be locked the whole time and there is no speed difference between left and right. But when discussing differential, it's not about only looking at if the differential is locked or it's not locked. It's how much is locking or how much it is decreasing the speed difference between left and right. This is why each level between no locking torque and high locking torque matters. Each of these would be a different setup adjustment, a different value for your preload. 
Now, we need to understand how this speed difference is influencing the car balance because it's what we are interested in this video. So, if the left tire is rotating slower than in free rolling, just like we're applying the brakes, meaning that we are generating force reward because of that. Now, the right tire, which is the inside tire, as we saw, is rotating a little faster than it would in free rolling because of the differential, and this is gonna create a force forward. But what matters here is that we see that even though the car is trying to turn to the right side here, these forces are gonna generate an yaw moment, and generating this yaw moment, it's gonna try to rotate the car to the opposite side because it is what we call a counter yaw moment. It's going on the opposite direction of the corner. So we saw that the limited slip differential is inducing forces on the tires at the corner entry because of the preload. And this yaw moment is being in the opposite direction of the corner, meaning that it generates more understeer. It's not helping the car to rotate, it's actually making it harder for the car to rotate, adding some more stability. So, if we had no locking torque whatsoever, open differential, there are no forces, no your moment because of the differential. As we increase the locking torque and now we have low locking torque, we have some, for, some force on the rear tires and then this is generating a small yaw moment, counter yaw moment, giving some understeer. If we increase this locking torque even higher, the speed difference is lower, the forces are even higher and the counter yaw moment is even higher as well. So this yaw moment is inducing even higher understeer in this car. Now let's look at the real example to really grasp what we have been showing um, so far. So in this example, we are looking at Road Atlanta and we are focusing on turn one. It is a turn medium to high speed and it's a long entry so we can really focus on the effects of the differential preload. We're going to be analyzing two setups. The first one is a low preload setup and as you already know this is going to generate some force on the rear axle but small meaning a small counter yaw moment giving more oversteer to this setup. The second setup is going to be a high preload setup in this case, we know that the forces are going to be higher, the counter yaw moment is going to be higher as well, giving more understeer to this vehicle. So let's look at these simulator videos. And first we start with the low preload setup. As we said, we would expect a little, a little bit more oversteer in this configuration. Let's see how it goes. You can see some steering corrections because of this higher oversteer or more oversteer setup. We can also see it from the top where we can see the car wobbling. As it approaches the apex, the, car, the driver needs to apply corrections. If we look at the high preload setup, we should expect more understeer and a more stable platform. You can see that the driver can be a lot more assertive with the steering in a single movement and then come back. So if we look at the data to try and quantify this and understand what happened, if we focus on the steering angle, as is discussed in another video of this series, we can see that in this steering profile, there is a lot of oversteer because of the corrections in the low preload setup. You can see all these corrections here, while the high preload setup can be a lot more assertive and do a single movement for this corner. We can also look at brake pressure because even though their brake application is very similar, meaning that the brakes are not influencing the car balance, and again, we have another video explaining how brake and throttle influence the car balance, um, even though their initial brake pressure is the same, we can see that the trail braking is a little different. The high preload setup can keep the brakes a little bit up, uh, applied a little bit further into the corner because it has a more stable platform. It doesn't have the problem of generating oversteer with this trail braking. Also, the wheel speed difference, which is actually the cause of everything we're seeing because we changed the differential. We can see that in the low preload setup, the speed difference as expected is a lot higher this is why you have lower forces, this is why you have a um, smaller counter yaw moment. Once you increase the high preload setup and you increase the locking torque, trying to reduce the speed difference between left and right is exactly what we can see here. So in the end, this is the cause of everything and we can quantify. A better way of quantifying this 
would be using KPIs or metrics. By using KPIs or metrics, instead of looking at the raw data like we're doing right now, you could simplify all of this into a single number per lap, and this would quantify how much wheel speed difference you have for different dif uh, differential preload adjustments. If you like the content, you would love our seminars. The first seminar I would like to show you is the data-driven performance engineering seminar. In this seminar, we discuss during three or four days around 11 hours per day, everything related to performance engineering. So we are going to discuss driving techniques, data analysis, and many different methodologies. The second seminar I wanted to tell you about is the Applied Vehicle Dynamics Seminar. In this seminar, we give you all the foundation and even advanced vehicle dynamics you need to understand everything in terms of performance engineering or vehicle dynamics. If you're interested, you can find the calendar, the link to the calendar in the video description, and you can also send us an email should you have any questions about the seminar. And besides that, if you think that your company or your team could benefit from working with Optimum G, these are some of the services that we offer. So we do performance engineering, and in this case, you could have the chance of having one of our performance or race engineers at the track with you, applying all the methodologies that Optimum G uses at the track. We also do vehicle dynamics consulting. It could go from car design to tire design and selection, car benchmark, um, simulation or anything else related to vehicle dynamics. And we also provide simulation software. So if you're interested in analyzing vehicle dynamics, kinematics and tires, you can also check our software solutions on our website, optimumg.com. And if you think that we could benefit from working together, please reach out by sending us an email to engineering at optimumg.com. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section so that I can get back to you and I'll see you in the next video.